All right, our next guests are the authors of the trilogy Time Shard. They're snappy dressers and snazzy dancers, David Fitzgerald and David Fritzy. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Hey, guys. It's great to be here. Oh, hold on a sec. I'm supposed to do my large applause. And there it is. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> 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 oh, oh guys, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Data's the mm. first time. Yeah, and she's going to be traumatized by this after this. So, um, <laughs> right now, you can go to David Fitzgerald's page and contribute to Patreon. And whatever money you contribute to Patreon after the show today, he will use for psych uh, psychiatric help for Dana because it's her first time on the show. So thank you so much, guys, for being on the show. <laughs> Maybe you're so kind to give us a quick bio as to who you guys are. Gotcha. You want to start? You want no, to start? you start. All right. Uh, my name is Dave Fitzgerald, and I'm best known, probably, if I'm known at all, for uh, a series of books called Nailed and Jesus Mything in Action, um, basically atheist books, uh, history books for uh, religious books. You know. um, I just, religious books for atheists. That's what I write. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I atheists know. can read. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and, David, uh, David also has a distinction of being actually probably the one of the most, if not the most, returned guest on this podcast. Woo! That's not. I know, right? <laughs> That's great to hear. I love going to the show. Actually, I always feel like I've come back home. Yeah, <laughs> 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 that hits me, man. <laughs> me. Uh, you mean I'm supposed to be traumatized by this? Dude. I'm not sure how to correlate. Just, just wait, just <laughs> wait. <laughs> like, <let's... laughs> so anyway, when I'm not writing blasphemous uh, history books for atheists, I'm, I do science fiction and other topics. And uh, Dana. Also, as a writer, I am also a writer. Um, I write mostly fiction. I've written the uh, Ashley Parker Plague books for Titan Books, um, who's also the publisher of the Time Shards trilogy. And uh, what else about me? Uh, well, Ashley Parker, that trilogy is a um, zombocalypse sort of. Buffy, Buffy, Buffy meets, meets the, the Walking, walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also working on this awesome. Uh, yeah. That's sort of a urban fantasy the Lilith series horror a dark urban fantasy and yeah. Lilith is a stunt woman who's also a demon hunter because one does these things and um <laughs> yeah I, and fun yeah. fact Dana is an ex uh I won't say stunt woman because she hates when I say <laughs> that but she draws on her experience working in Hollywood as a stunt person I was a special oh. player doing sword fighting um like Movies like Army of Darkness and some really She's bad my favorite things. person. I love her already. <laughs> right? Right? What? Oh, so, so old, Army of old... Darkness is amazing. Darkness. If you get hey. tired of your favorite fella, come and see me, dear. So the, old, <laughs> the old advice of writing. Uh, that, right? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I've been she, traded in. She's totally kicking. <laughs> <out. laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm missing like half the crosstalk, so you're fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I, I, I this is completely random, obviously, but I always wanted to do a book or a, uh, a show about, uh, uh, there was something I, I called Shadow Dancers. There was, it was supposed to be like a horror movie, mm. but these creatures were actually living in shadows. So they were, now, is the this an actual like movie horror. that existed, or is this just a beautiful no, movie? This is, no, this is something I wanted to do. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. So, 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 for example, if you 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 think that the the protagonist has to be in a room that's got nothing but light, but he's still casting a shadow, mm. so the creature could still reach out of the shadow and grab him from there. You know, I always wanted to do that. So, um, I do for you guys. Right you need to read my first book, Spawn of Lilith, because <laughs> there's a movie within the book, and the movie is called Pale Dreamer, which is actually based on a screenplay that my ex husband and I wrote. And the bad guys in that move through the shadows. They're shadows. Nice. So yeah. you might Holy want to read that. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I had an original idea there. Okay. Uh, and and yeah, if you want to see the shadow people, just stay up for four days straight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, on meth. You know, that's the, <laughs> hey, no. generally the... No, no, we, don't don't do do we, we don't give out how oh, we do a show here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, uh, let's talk about time shards and let's go with the genesis of it. How did you guys come up with this idea? First of all, it's a collaboration between you two guys, and you guys have been writing this for quite a while. And now all three of your books are out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm done. 
And <laughs> actually, I, I've heard nothing but great things about it to the point that we are actually going to get a uh, trilogy from you guys and actually give it out as a contest to our listeners. We've mm-hmm. talked about this on the show, on the show early on. So uh, mm-hmm. hopefully, we'll have you guys will be kind enough to autograph the copy for the lucky winner that gets the trilogy. But let's go on the genesis of it. How did Time Shards start? You want to? Tell the story. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dave used to do um, a lot of tabletop role playing games, and he was telling me about an idea he'd had for one of them, which was basically what would happen if the timeline shattered and was put back together like a patchwork quilt, and you'd have people in all of these different, uh, you know, like people from the. Uh, uh, great names in the time <laughs> periods. My mind is blanking on time. Remember, remember, Renaissance. Renaissance. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, but the puzzle pieces all came from different times. Like over here, right. it's yeah. 1776, or it's 5 million BC. Over here, it's yeah. so far future. He was telling me about this when we were driving home from Comic Con one year, and I just got chills up and down my spine. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a great series idea for a book. And it so. Is. I uh, made him sit down with me and write up 50 <laughs> pages and send it to uh, my agent, who's now our agent, and yeah. uh, she pitched it to Titan, and that's what up. happened. Yeah, because yeah, it was just such a cool idea. Um, so so that's without, what happened. So without giving spoilers, you essentially, yeah. I'm assuming here in your book, you have a couple protagonists, the timeline essentially breaks? Right. One of the fun things, it's kind of got all the elements of a time travel novel and a post-apocalyptic novel. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it's got a real motley crew of heroes. So, And one of the fun things about them is they're from different times as well. So mm-hmm. we've got a girl from, you know, 20th century San Diego. 21st century. 21st century, actually. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a, a guy, a Celt from the first century. Mm-hmm. Um Victorians, World War II commandos, yeah. uh, ancient Egyptians, just and uh, it, it's really fun to have such a ragtag group that, uh, like for instance, in the first book, our two main protagonists, that girl and the the guy, they don't speak the same language at all. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Yeah. that's exactly what I wanted to focus on because I see too many books and movies that do that i guess for the benefit of the reader but you know you'll have oh he time travels back to uh king arthur's court and he speak the same american english how could that possibly be yeah and yeah. you guys decide to tackle that as authors to make it more realistic exactly that- um it's, it's funny because no, i'm mostly known for history books and usually i'll write a history book and then i want to do some fiction project because that way i don't have to worry about footnotes i don't have to worry about citations and all that making arguments i just have to make it all up well mm-hmm. this book we had to do the research we had to do, <laughs> get it all right and we had to make it all up so in a lot of ways it was the worst of both worlds but i think it's don't bo- he loves research yeah. i'm sorry it's just when he says oh it's so hard it's like he is never happier than surrounded by a pile of books it's a fair if we have an earthquake he's buried in books that's it and, yeah uh, yeah I could, totally, so, I could totally see that happening too <laughs> but it's funny because like on every single page of that book you can know there's at least one thing that took an hour's worth of well what did they use for money in 1452 right? you know this year um Wow. Yeah. Damn, so- it's like, it's funny because, like, now I wish we would have made a skit that was like, you know, <laughs> Jesus with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rasputin and <laughs> I mean, Jesse James. Just as chill. far as Just like see a sandbox goes, it's a really cool idea because you can throw lots of things together. Well, yeah. One rule we did have is um, we decided to make it geographically stable. So, like, in book one, it takes place in, in uh, southeastern England. And so you're not going to see Japanese samurai. You're not going to see Jesse James. You're not going to see, uh, mm-hmm. but you can see Neanderthals. You can see King Arthur's knight. Oh, see... that would be there during some point. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you were, if you were really good, it kind of gave it corners. So it wasn't completely crazy off the wall. Um, so and you know, it's time, but not necessarily time and space. Right. I mean, yeah, to an extent. And it was the fun thing about that is as the series progresses, you know, they go to different places and the story really takes off in book two and book three. And um, so as it goes to these new places, we would do research there and realize, oh, here's this thing we didn't even realize. We got to throw that in the book, you know. Yeah. You know yeah. Yeah. It lives yeah. this place. We got to put those in the book. Uh, so is it- really big on getting giant sharks and monsters and, and uh, 
crocodiles and tatanaboas. Yeah, and, and all the. All this. Well, I'm a horror writer, and one of the things that I like about stuff is, is you know, I like a, a real sense of horror, even if there's a sense of humor, and even if it's science fiction, yeah. because that's just what I like. So mm -hmm. you would ask me, what time periods do you want? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, can I have a megalodon? You know, I just, so. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, dude. That makes it so fun. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, so the interesting part about this is you, you can rely on what we know of the past, but since you're doing something about time travel, I'm assuming there's something coming from the future as well. There it could be. Maybe. There could be. Maybe. 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 Oh, we're not going to yeah. reveal yeah. that. Yeah, we're not doing yeah. spoilers I'm, yet. I'll just say this. I'll just talk about, yeah. It, uh, book one starts with, there's this thing called the event, shatters the timeline. And so book one is basically, we meet all these different characters that who have survived. no idea yeah. what just happened. When the timeline shatters, basically, you know, you'll, you, you could have like a tiny little section of one timeline here and then the rest of whoever, whatever was in that timeline, they're gone. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. gone. And um, it's like so, a cookie cutter. Chunk, 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 yeah. You know? so, so there's not a ton of survivors. It just depends on the shards and what was there when it happened. Um, so, yeah, but there's enough interesting things that sometimes they'll, they'll walk into a place and they don't know where, when, or what the hell is going on in this particular place. Um, and uh, so, so let me see if I can let me see if I can get this straight. Sure. So let's say, for example, we're in your book. Let's say we're in your book. Okay. David, David Dana, and I are having a conversation. Yeah. Your timeline shattered. Now, what what happens to one of us and what happens to the <laughs> other two? Well, here's the thing. If we're all in the same geographic area right now, right. Um, you'll be fine. As, assuming that the shard we're in is big enough to, to keep all of us together. Can I, can I say what happens to Amber? Sure. Yeah. Well, not necessarily because <laughs> one of the very first things that happens when the event happens is... Our, our heroine Amber is out on a boat and, a, you know, an idyllic little picnic with this guy she just met. And when the event happens, the boat is chopped in half. She's there gone. <laughs> and he's still holding her hand. <laughs> Just <laughs> his arm. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, and meanwhile, depending if we were here in Humboldt County, California, or in Canada, mm -hmm. we would have, you know, lumberjacks or Indians or, you know, fill in the blank. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially, if, you, if, if we were in the same room, all three of us, like we're looking at you now, yeah. Yeah. I could shatter right between the two of you across oh. and you split me in half. Yep. And that's your shard right there. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's yep. under the dome style. Like, uh, you just get no cut, point. dude. You just get <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, my luck. Love it. <laughs> so, so, is is let's say for example let's say that example okay i've been cut in half dana yeah. and david have been separated now what are you is david sent to a different time or is david yeah, what's probably before? happened uh, is one shard has been destroyed completely and another shard is still around so 50 50 shot that uh that so in this example all three of us are going to be gone you know one of us may be gone permanently one of us may be stuck on the shard world yeah. Okay. And one is chopped in half. Yeah. Or did the other shards go somewhere else? There's your so follow -up. We haven't actually <laughs> specified, but we, we, we talk about it because yeah. I like the idea that there's always, you know, as much as I like to kill people, I, I also like the idea, oh, we could bring people back, you know. Well, again, again, not but, too much of a spoiler, but there's there's some there's some hints in book one what happens to at least some, if not most, of the shards. But then there's some crazy things happening in book one, book two, and finally in book three. Where we see it's not even that clear cut, no mm. pun intended. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to have to pull out that audio of Dana saying, as much as I like to kill people, I'm just gonna <laughs> I was just going to say, like, for the listeners, like, that's not, uh, don't horror. clip that out. You know? um, <laughs> for our audience, <laughs> Dana does not kill people. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. In the book. In the, book. In the story. In the story, <laughs> it's a whole different thing. In the story, she's like Chucky. She just kills everybody. <laughs> you know, every author I know, their website, if the FBI gets a hold of it, it's like, oh, they're going to set up all these books. <laughs> oh, no, just a, or, a horror author. Yeah, it's for fine. my last book, uh, my, my third in my Lily series, I spent a lot of time researching serial killers and, and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah. How do you explain it with murder? How do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
people do have a, f- a morbid fascination with serial killers. I mean, mm-hmm. how many people listen to true crime podcasts all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> oh man, like all the time. I yeah, it's all the time. I, I, my podcast. Oh, Gross. So fascinating. Who listens to podcasts? <laughs> well, yeah, right. <laughs> Um, if you do like serial killers, you might enjoy some of the books in Time Shards too. Because hey, I'm just saying, just saying. Yeah. 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 Man, you yeah. just spoiled the whole thing. Now, now right. I know there's serial uh, killers. Um, that, that was <laughs> that was one of the cool things about co- collaborating that I wasn't sure about in the beginning. But like, I never would have thought to put a serial killer in a book like this. <laughs> I never would have thought to like do horrible things to innocent people in the, the way she does in there. So. Uh, <laughs> yes, you know. Yeah. Humor too. I mean, her horror is horrific, but it's also very funny too. If you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it's it's, it's a, there's a lot of that Hell kind yeah. of. Uh, so we know we know not to mess with Dana right off the bat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, don't mess with, Dana. <laughs> don't mess with this woman. She's gonna kick your ass. <laughs> so no, let's go back right. to that example I said. Okay, we, time charges happen. I've been cut in half. I'm dead. Now <laughs> David and Dana uh, eventually on each side of a, a, a different shard. Is one of you staying in place or another one like transported to a different time or is it reassembled to something? Here's what I would think would happen is one of us, you can pretty much flip a coin and see which it was, would still be here in this little chunk of wherever we are. In the shard world. The the other, they'd be surrounded by maybe something in the Pleistocene era, maybe something Mm -hmm. in the first century, maybe something in the future, you know. So there's lots of questions about what that could be. But he's would you probably be the one chased by the three of us could be dead. Or... No, uh, then again, the shark could have just encompassed all three of us, and we'd all be fine. But that's yeah. not what he's asking. An island, that's not what he's yeah. asking. an island of our own little time here. Yeah, yeah, but you know, Dina needs to see some blood. So I've been dead. I've been cut yeah, in half. Dead. 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 He's dead. Okay, he's been cut in half. Yeah, Kevin's <laughs> dead. Okay. So I know he's trying to figure out if if we were all if if he's cut in half and you and I. You know, the the shard cuts him in half, and we're like on either side. One of us would still be in the shard world, yep. and the other person would, would probably be gone. Yeah, would be for, gone for we all don't extent, know where. So. Maybe just be gone. inches component yeah. atoms. Maybe something else. Yeah, we don't know. That's as clear cut an answer yeah. we can give you on that. So you know. uh, one would be standing here with uh, the half of a squid octopus hat, you know, and. <laughs> <laughs> That, that brings you to my next question. Staying with this example, okay, David and Dana have been separated. Kevin's cut in half. The material world around you, the room you're in, yeah. is that also cut in half? Or oh, yes. Just oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. For instance, say, say you know, we're, we're here in the office at the Clark Museum, which is where Dave and I are right now. So whoever is, is here in the shard world, there will be part of an office, and then there could there could be – this office say 20 years ago with whatever changes are going on, or we could have a slice of the, the Pleistocene era and there or could be any, a dinosaur right yeah, there. Yeah, literally any other time. It could yeah. be in the middle of a battle between, you know, cavalry and Indians, yeah. you know. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's another thing in book one, we see people getting yanked out at the most inopportune times, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Neil, so Armstrong, get, Neil Armstrong on the moon, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So you yeah. get like a half of a Eiffel Tower sort of situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fun thing about this book. And one of our author friends who gave us a blurb says, "I can't stop thinking about this book because it's a great sandbox to play in." You keep thinking, yeah. "Oh, if we were over here, what would we see here?" If we were over yeah. here, yeah, yeah. Like part here? of the Tower Bridge is still there. Part is gone. In I London. mean, it just oh. depends. So, so, David, David can Hell be transported yeah. to prehistoric time, but mm-hmm. he lands right beside the Velociraptor. But the raptor itself has been cut like in lost its sight. Yeah. It's yeah, been yeah, cut on everybody getting cut in half. <laughs> it's, like, oh, yes. <laughs> it's just at the edges, just yeah. at the edges. Everything inside is fine. Yeah. Sabrina, hide the knives. I know. <laughs> Trust me, most, I know. The most fun thing about this kind of mix and match is having all these characters who don't just speak different languages until we figure that out in book two, um, but they look at the world in different ways. So mm-hmm. um, it was fun to have like their strengths and weaknesses work together. Um, like for instance, our first century Celt he doesn't freak out at certain things as much because he expects the world to be weird and full of magic and monsters and things like that. Right. That was a great um, And yet he he's very superstitious. He prays to everything. Um, mm-hmm. 
he's got all these Celtic, you know, mindset about things. Um, he could easily build a fire as compared to somebody from this century would exactly, have a hard yeah, time. Exactly that kind of thing. <laughs> and yeah, and he's he came in strangely and handy in a situation that the others couldn't figure out, and he had an idea, and oh, it no. turned out to be the right one. Um, so it wasn't just like, oh, the guys in the future know they have all the answers, and they mm -hmm. you know, that's that's a trope that's kind of played out and doesn't really hold up well. I think for the reasons you just said, you know, you know how to live in this world and you know how to you know yeah, be yeah. more in touch with nature and things like that I, i've got a strange question here because yeah, you know you, you guys obviously did a lot of research on this and to be quite uh faithful to and accurate about the the the, the characters you're putting in there do you did you feel that maybe as authors that you might have to dumb things down for the audience that no, might not no. be as well yeah. No. no. In oh. fact, the opposite is true. We went way too far and way too deep in the thing. <laughs> the, the, the nice yeah. thing about it is people have read it and critics and authors have told us it feels like you're there when you describe yeah. these, nice. and these times. And I'm really super happy about that. Dumbing things down never works. It's like, yeah. you know, if you're writing YA or even children's books, you'd never want to dumb it down. You just basically want to, you know, moderate the language or amount of yeah. sex or whatever is going to be in it. But the, and what's the point of dumbing things yeah down? exactly yeah. because part of the fun is immersing yourself in these other it's, it makes it another world when yeah. you go into the place. yeah it allows you to use your imagination yeah, yeah. exactly well, I, I agree but i mean this is a strange era that we live in you know where people oh for sure, for sure. In the books mm -hmm. sometimes you know even when you uh, a lot of movies you'll see today they'll just put a phenomenon they'll just given a one-line explanation and people seem to be satisfied with it that you guys mm -hmm. went the other way you basically went really really i deep. think books tend to do that in general yeah. yeah, I think you're probably right, Sabrina. Yeah. Um, and it was fun. It was super fun. And like, we tried to keep the history so spot on. For instance, this is, I feel super guilty about. This is the level of detail. Oh, wow. So there's a character in the English Civil War who says something, a word, pandemonium, which really he could have said later in his life, but he couldn't have said it at this point in time because it was still 10 years away from being written. That's the level <laughs> of what we're thinking about. It's like... Uh, yeah, that wow. is that is detail. That yeah, is it's detail. Super detail. Yeah. Super okay. Detail. <laughs> and 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 hopefully and in a fun way. It's it's it. The story moves along and it's constantly bouncing from, uh, ping ponging from one section to another. So it reads really gonna, fast. Yeah. Yeah. And, but that's uh, good though, because then you're gonna have all the nerds be like, that guy and, like was actually a time traveler, and yeah, that's absolutely. how he was. You know, he was already traveling through time. That's how he was able to know that word. You know, <laughs> and our, our, that our, our audiobook narrator, bless his heart. Oh, God. We, we, we counted finally throughout the trilogy. There are 22 different languages he had to learn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. To do the audiobook. Wow. Yeah, wow. He's really, good. He's, really yeah. good. He's he's up there with Ray Porter as far as yeah. awesome. Aaron Shedlock yeah, from he's Tantor. He's really great. Yeah. Wow. So, so uh, I'm assuming you, you guys did this collaboration. I'm assuming each one of you has the strength and weaknesses. I mean, we're all still all really established that when it comes to history and stuff like that, that's David's forte, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Dana? What, what was your big, big contribution to the what? What did you bring that David may not have been as good to bring to that book? Um, I think I think outside the box, as far as different characters, I brought some levels that wouldn't have been there otherwise. And sure. uh, did I mention? <laughs> Megalodon. <laughs> um, I, I also written more fiction than he has, and um, I, I'm good at pacing mm. and at roping him in. Going, no, we're not going to have an entire chapter of French soldiers singing French songs, honey. No. <laughs> Thank you. That, but, yeah, I I not that. Either. that was that was an example of no. This has to be trimmed. Slightly um, exaggerated, but not very exaggerated. No, yeah. no, no, no. Um, well, but for instance, yeah, there's a whole there's two whole chapters that basically had to get cut. One was a, a French Napoleonic battle scene, and the other was a chunk of a uh, the Battle of El Alamein um, in World War II. And, well, those were, I mean, those were actually fun scenes. For me, it was, yeah. it was, he spent a long time researching those French songs by God and he wanted to use them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honey, it was a whole chapter. <laughs> it was a whole chapter. Uh, I've never read those French songs for sure. Yeah. I can totally get that. Can get to you to translate. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, every book, every book is like an iceberg. You, this is a little tip and beneath it, there's so much research. Yeah, yeah. we have. This was massive. The iceberg beneath these books is, is Massive, huge. yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, I also, I, well, Dave is really good at writing action too. Um, I just have a different take on characters. And yeah. oh, also, I will say this. Um, 
when it comes to female characters and oh, how yeah. they are presented, <laughs> yeah. he needed me. Yeah. He needed me. <laughs> because Dave is not chauvinistic. He's very, you know, pro strong women and everything like that. But for whatever reason, whenever he wrote anything um, for Amber, I immediately saw her as this little angry chewing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he just didn't fun. have the perspective. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's weird. It's he loves me, and I'm not like that at all. So <laughs> it, it, it's it's just it was a very interesting problem to have because it was something I didn't expect. So yeah, I. That's yeah. yeah. It's it's great that you guys can manage to collaborate like that mm -hmm. and actually uh, really good. Like and, a bedroom, compensate for each other. <laughs> and and like each lots other. Of, lots of walks on the beach hashing out the plot yeah. problems. <laughs> and, <laughs> of course. Um, and so, I like collaborating. Yeah. So that was the other thing I brought to it is experience collaborating. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of a lot of different people I've collaborated with. So it gave me more perspective of the best way to approach it with Dave when he was kind of like, this is my baby. Hands <laughs> off. So. And, and honestly, I mean, we've, we've collaborated on a lot of stuff unofficially, but this was the first one that had both of our names on it. And it really did feel like it's my baby. And it's like, I was very super protective, but mm -hmm. right from the get go, she just brought so much to the story. And, um, and yeah, I love, awesome. I mean, I mean, it was such a great idea. So, you yeah. know, mm. It, it is a great idea, and the potential of that idea is beyond what you guys wrote already. Yeah. So, my uh, question is: Is there going to be another time shard? Maybe like a time and space shard or something like that? Well, you know, um, there is a kind of throwaway line in book three where somebody describes something that happened. It's like <laughs> we can say more about this, or we could just write a whole other book about it later, and uh, mm. it, it could happen. It could happen. We're actually already talking about doing an anthology of short stories set in the time shard universe. Nice. And a couple of people have been expressed interest in being on, on board with that. Yeah, and, that's good. And this is one of those things I've got my fingers crossed, but it's such a long shot. I'm not even worried about it. But at least two people have pitched it to uh, producers in Hollywood for a TV. That was my next question. Oh, wow. yeah. that, that sounds like such a, an amazing idea for a movie. Yeah. I, God knows it'd be a huge blockbuster. <laughs> I'd I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 I'm <clears throat> I uh, used to be an avid reader, and I haven't for a long time, but I want to read these books. <laughs> so. It's super fun, honestly. Um, I love the characters. I love the, the certain situations that they're in. And uh, it's just, it, as a history geek and a science fiction geek, it really hit all the notes. Um, nice. No, I, I, I'll get sucked in. I get, I get asked a question about your characters because, you know, the event happens, and they're they're projected somewhere else. Uh, in time. No, no, not, projected. not projected. They stay in place. It's just everything else goes everything to hell. Or it comes together. Okay, sorry, yeah, my, yeah, my, I understand. My bad. Yeah. But yeah. you know, uh, history—if you study history—is a lot of moments of boredom punctuated by a few moments of excitement. <laughs> Yeah. So, it, it, it kind of as a, as a reader, does every character just pop up in a moment of excitement all of a sudden, or is it, 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 there's a mix? There's a mix. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. that, that's good because it, it kind of weird, it would feel weird if every character pops up at an amazing battle all of a sudden, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just thinking that'd be like, you know, so funny, like, you know, as far as like, you know, not thinking that like wars are going on, it's you know, like you got people from wars popping into the dude playing video games, <laughs> for him, you know. <laughs> I'm playing actually your level. What are you doing here? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, we have one gal, um, you know, she's a minor character who gets drunk and comes out of the pub, you know, several sheets to the wind, stumbles off to find her way home and ends up in a swamp that's not supposed to be there, you know. So <laughs> oh, that's shit. kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys get virtual reality and all of a sudden he ends up in a real battle. <laughs> yeah, it's real. Yeah. I love it. So it's funny. The safety settings. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We had some uh, critics that clearly did not get the book at all because uh, one was saying, oh, there's this huge plot hole about blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, did you read the book? That, you know, that's not a mistake. That's on purpose. <laughs> <It's>, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and one totally thing was complaining about, oh, they keep running from into dinosaurs. And it's like, have to get to, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. I'm sorry you hated it. But that's part of the, that's part of the, the featured 
presentation. You know? You're going to have to have that. Yeah. That I mean, person had a much longer reign on this planet than we ever had. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them because there's a lot of points in history, you know, where, and, and some of the shards are larger than others. Yeah. And we, <laughs> and in the course of the book, they come to realize that the further it is from the event, the bigger the shards are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. So there's very few high tech shards, for instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's not not a lot of TV, radio, and electricity going on anymore. Yeah. Um, but there's lots of ice age and earlier and Cambrian explosion and. Uh, oh, so you you on the beach. Next thing you know, you get an ice age around you. It's like, oh god! Oh my god! Like, <laughs> yeah, it literally <laughs> happens to our our. Oh, uh, god. <laughs> Yeah, we That's how we Stop first meet giving it. out spoilers without even knowing. Yeah, <laughs> you're, 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 you're on the right track now. You're on the right you know, track. One of my favorite things, um, and the, he added this for me because he also knows I like natural disasters. Um, not personally, <laughs> but I like you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, being disaster in them is not porn, disaster Just, porn. Yeah. Um, the the yeah. bit where um the, the geography changes and so we get oh, the tsunami. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's there's some really cool stuff that happens. Yeah. 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 That's another great. Oh, that's great awesome. Point. All of a sudden, you know, something's separated halfway, and all of a sudden, you, there's a cliff missing or something like that. Yeah. All of a sudden, that impacts and everything around. It was also fun playing with how different characters think what ha just happened or how they describe the event or whatever they yeah. call it in their little oh they got all their conspiracy theories oh, there. oh yeah big time big okay. time yeah i i'd imagine that would be the case you know please, <laughs> please, please tell me you got a q and on support in your book somewhere that ends up with dinosaur food as i mean that. we can't have a virus without <laughs> conspiracy theories so yeah, this, no, i can no. imagine oh, jesus yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a lot more post-apocalyptic. There's a lot fewer people to spread uh, conspiracy theories anymore. Yeah, more That's dinosaurs, true. fewer people. But yeah. very good. <laughs> and with some notable exceptions here and there. And kind of got rid of the GOP, though. Kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it already. I like, very appreciate right. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Amber went in her her. I think she's in 2014, 2015. So she's pre-Trump. So yeah. Oh, interesting. Trump's not even a part of oh. it. Trump's just that guy from The Apprentice, as far as she's concerned. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. That was already too much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Actually, I, I definitely don't want to get into the spoilers, but there's some throwaway lines about what's happening in our future um, that people will enjoy, too. Ooh. <laughs> slash be horrified by but yeah <laughs> no oh, I, find, wow. I find it interesting that you were telling how the uh the the, the further away from the event the bigger the shards mm -hmm. because it brings the idea of a window that's been a uh, rock's been thrown into and that yeah. point of impact is going to get the small shards and yeah. the bigger ones are going to be further away is that what you guys and, use? and i'll just say that's a good analogy a, a part of the arc of the story of the trilogy is in figuring out what the hell just happened and oh but did you hear his question yeah, sorry what I thought I did. What did you? What did you repeat it? He was. He was saying. He it's was like basically. He's yeah, asking yeah, if yeah, you exactly. would, if you threw a rock through your window yeah. to figure out how the shards would work. <laughs> was that the inspiration? Was that the inspiration? All right. I was picturing the whole timeline as being that stained glass and yeah. the event being the rock, and which is which is a very good analogy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what I was going to say is the so, arc yes. of the book is they're determining what was that rock and where did right. it hit right you know but like the, as know. far as the sides of the shards would go right so like if yeah. you threw a rock through a window like yeah. the the closest shit by the the rock would be very small right it would be yeah. like a small like impact right and so there'd be all these tiny shards and right. if the farther you got back, like you, then you get your big pieces, right? Exactly. So it's like farther exactly. away from. Now where... that's never come up when we talked about it. That analogy did not come up, but it. But it's spot. That is, that is exactly <laughs> what the case wow. is. So yeah. You've got wow. very very few that's future funny. shards. Very mm. very few. Twenty yeah. and. Yeah, anyway. already, yeah, I'm that. belaboring. That's them. awesome. Okay, no, that's just funny that like yeah. we came to the you know he, he, Kevin, Kevin basically did the the conspiracy theory thing and like came <laughs> yeah. up with his own well, that's exactly reasoning. <laughs> it makes me happy to have you say that because you are immersed in the shard world now. It's yeah. like, yeah. like somebody yeah. of the shard world. It's, uh, totally it's, like, it's the lore, man. Like yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I gotta ask because this is, you're dealing with some subjects. You're dealing with you know breaking the timeline, and if there is a group out there that likes to nitpick at this kind of stuff, <laughs> or like physicists and stuff like that, so uh, have they come back to talk to you about what your interpretation of that? Fortunately, I mean physicists would have the best way to to 
to nitpick because because I nitpick it. It's like you know this there's I can tell you a twenty page thing on why this could never ever work. For instance, just one thing, just one thing, we're moving in space and through time. Yes, so mm-hmm. that's a mess. I was but, just gonna say, that's but so even more, idea. the universe is expanding, which means yes. everyone is getting bigger all the time. We don't realize it, but if you had like shards hey, from you over it. the last three weeks, you'd be getting smaller and smaller until you could like fit on your dashboard, or you know, it's like <laughs> writing a zombie fiction. As long as your logic, your internal logic, has to be consistent, yeah. even if you're using soft science or even if yeah. you're making shit up you have to be consistent yeah yep. and the meticulousness of of the thought yeah and the research that he did to make it consistent you and, know and that was ironclad we did not you know break those rules at all at one point i made him explain it to me in terms i could understand yeah. him so it took <laughs> you know he had to think about this a lot this is like one well, and one point our editor wanted to do something just to kind of mix things up and it's like dude no no, don't you get it? You can't oh, do don't listen to the it's editor. Work in this. It's yeah. kind of like when you see Matrix and then you see Matrix 2 and 3, mm-hmm. and they're like, but, 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 you know. Um, well, yeah. Four is coming out this year. Ew. <laughs> we'll yeah. see what, yeah, maybe, maybe they'll be able to bring it back like they did with Alien, but we'll see. So yeah. are there, uh, so are there just like, like, ar- like Napoleon's army just like in space, just dead? Uh, no, we there's no, we're nobody floating around in space. No. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I say that. We're never going to know exactly what happens to the people that are not on Shard World because we're not entirely sure. Oh. Just assume that they're gone. Well, you say right. that, and yet, yeah, but they could be in space. I'll tell you what. Well, we you, don't know. you finish reading book three, and then we'll talk because yeah. okay, you, right. you have a different you you a question in a different way. He keeps so. wanting. He's keep trying to get an answer. I to know. This question. It's like it's no, like, you're not going to get an answer to the no. I will say this though, we, there is an answer. There is an answer, and but you uh, can't have it. And you can't have it yet. <laughs> I can't read the give books, it to you. Y'all. You have to earn it. Yes, by reading you the book. Yoda. It. It's the American way, man. Like you gotta earn this shit. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's better for you. You'll it, you'll appreciate it better. Right. No, I have no idea what he's talking about. So, um, <laughs> well, this subject is so fascinating. We'll this talk subject is so fascinating, and I'm glad you guys pulled out a, a, a trilogy. Uh, because I think one book by itself would not have been enough to actually. Oh God, no! Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But it's, it's funny because I feel like the story doesn't even really get started until book two. Honestly, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I was about to ask you. That's the the book one. There's probably a lot, a lot of setup to. It's make- a lot of setup. I mean, it's self contained, but at the end, you're kind of going, "Oh my God!" If there's not a sequel, I will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's yeah. such a big world that I'm really surprised it's only in three. I mean, mm-hmm. well, this I, is exactly that was my question. Now yeah, that now yeah, you guys have established this world, this is a yeah. bit like it's a bit like the, the story of Star Wars. It started as one movie contained within yeah. itself. It grew to a trilogy, and then it grew into an entire universe. There's a, there's a well, I mean, Lucas had an danger. idea for all nine, but there's a total danger of something like that happening because we we saw a big we see a big chunk of the world in through the course of this trilogy. But that's a big planet, and we yeah. could go even more. And I tried to, we really tried to include even just little bits, nods to everywhere. I mean, yeah. but but yeah, there's just so much, and you some places have a surprising amount of history. The um, story with these characters is, I mean, there, there, there could be more to their story as well, but the story yeah. that we were trying to tell, we could tell in three books in terms yeah, of exactly what the setup. The goal that they have to do and what they have to do to obtain that goal that we covered in three books yeah so i mean yeah. you could do an entire series like that and do the so time could, shard africa and you do the entire time shard from the african point of view what happened in africa well yeah, the, absolutely. The happened oh, somewhere. Absolutely. you could go back a bunch i mean you can go back to every single place and culture like and have like the same yeah. event happen and like see how they go oh man you well could, here's the thing though wow. and yeah. one of the most fun things about this book was being able to kind of shine a spotlight on the history you never knew. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I didn't know these guys were even here. Or this, or, Wahakians? Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah,
Cool. It's like so you got the baby magic Jesus, and he's like <laughs> fucking with everybody, right? That, that, <laughs> that, 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 okay, and that is my next question to you, Yeah, it's funny thing. Jesus is in it. One other, yeah, one yeah. other role we had was no fictional characters, so no yeah. Sherlock Holmes, uh, no Robin Hood, yeah. and no Jesus. No, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's debatable. I mean, <laughs> it is debatable, it's debatable for the purpose of this book. Um, yeah. No Jesus. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, you could have yeah, had a guy I, named there's Jesus. There's so much more I can say about that, but I'm going to shut up right now. Yeah, otherwise, like... <laughs> I totally like, I know. Moses parting the Red Sea in that. And there you right go. Yeah. The event, yeah. So. I just wanted on record that I purposefully triggered. Uh, <laughs> 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 Another thing is, like, there's so much cool stuff in history. We didn't need to go to the bullshit side of history. Right. Like, right. Um, and that, that was one of the major fun things about this book. Like, I feel like I know the city of ancient Alexandria so much better than I did when mm. I was writing the book. Mm -hmm. So much so that I could correct the mistakes on maps in other books of Alexandria I read. Oh, <laughs> oh that's great. <laughs> yeah, if you've seen the movie Agora, I kind of oh. have a love-hate uh, with that movie, but the stuff they get right is really awesome. We and... just we had to watch it so many times. <laughs> but then again, we also watched Rat Patrol, which is yeah. my favorite childhood uh, show Patrol. I used to watch with my dad to get some of the uh, desert fighting stuff that yeah. we have mm -hmm. going on. So that was oh. fun. A lot of research in this move in this one, and a lot of oh. inspiration. Cause... That's like our my like y'all's version of like uh, me is Chappie and a girlfriend's yeah. a Secret Garden. So it's a, an interesting, <laughs> almost the same. Yeah, and you could really, have both but... of those. You could have both of those in a book like this, and we do. <laughs> That's the beauty is we keep bouncing around. You know. With different characters, different viewpoints, different places, different times. I, I gotta ask you guys without giving you a spoiler. Okay. okay. The event. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can you tell me? Is it what causes the time to to split the shard and all that? Was it a man made thing or was it a natural event? We'll just let you read the book and you find it. How are you supposed to not spoiler that one, man? Yeah, I was going to say, that's the like that major spoiler the whole trilogy. <laughs> the biggest like, spoiler. No, yeah. let's just leave that one. On yeah, that's that's like last page shit yeah. right there. No, dude. Like, no. <laughs> oh, Darth Vader. I don't want to know. Bad, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> so what's I, next then for David and Dana so when funny. it comes to writing stuff? Are you guys going to pursue that, or are you going to work on? Oh some yeah, she's. You're... I just turned in copy edits in the third book in my Lilith trilogy, and uh, what am I doing next? I'm I I've got a couple different things that I'm thinking about. I wanted to take a break because I I realized that it had been. 10 or 15 years since I didn't have a book that was due and I, I want some time to think about writing for the fun of it and not because I've got a contract gun to my head. Um, so, but I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas and, um, yeah. 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 And I'm working on a book on sex and violence in the Bible, but nice. I've, I've gotten distracted a little bit because I've been asked to do some talks and do some reviews and critiques. And so there's little projects that have been in the way, but, Mm -hmm. As a result of that, something and I ha I'll have to come on the show and talk to you about it because it really is blowing my mind now. Where, yeah, I'm known for talking about Jesus. I feel like you guys are. Are you still hearing me? It looked like yeah, we're still here. I don't know. Um, oh, I me, mean, I just, I just. <laughs> <made that. laughs> um, it's not just <laughs> Jesus that's a myth. It looks like spoiler alert. Every single world religion's founding figure is just as mythical. As uh, yeah, okay. and, yeah. and, oh, uh, oh man and it's yeah. like i mean yeah there was a joseph smith but there was no prophet moroni more no mormon what? um and same thing with people like muhammad who you would think well we've got his family tree we've got this whole history of islam mm -hmm. and he was just seventh century until you look at the the early history and then you start seeing the same patterns Develop. It's like, oh, oh well, actually, we don't know that until the 8th century. And, oh, actually, that was supposed to have happened in the 6th century, but it really didn't happen until the end of the 7th century. Interesting. Um, and He will not be writing a book on Muhammad, <laughs> though. I do not yeah. want to hire bodyguards. Scientology is <laughs> <and Islam, laughs> the one true faith, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, no as long as you don't draw a picture of him, you know, <laughs> that's, it's, like a, it's not a picture book, right? Like, I'm, yeah. Muhammad, that'd be... <laughs> So uh, I guess from from two seasoned authors, uh, maybe we have some budding authors in our audience. Who knows? Any piece of advice you guys would give them? 
Um, <laughs> don't try to do it all in your head and wait till it's perfect. Put it on paper first, yeah. or put it on the you know the screen, and then try to fix it. That's a big okay. one. Okay. Also, uh, don't be afraid to to get editing done. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my words. My words. My precious words. Like yeah, yeah. Get rid of that. yeah. Um, yeah. Read a lot. Read a lot. It, it, there's, it, it just always amazes me people who a lot of self-published authors evidently don't really read very much um, mm -hmm. and read good stuff. Read, yeah. read Why are you looking stuff? at me when you said that? Read good stuff <laughs> like, like yeah. Time Shards and like there you go. Yeah. of Lilith. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say if you, if you want to write horror, I mean, read, I mean, read Stephen King. Read, I mean, mm. just read a lot. Just read a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot and learn to figure out, you know, what the difference is between show and and tell that there whole big go. thing yeah. don't don't tell us show us because yeah. um and, and just really hone your craft don't just i'm going to write a book and publish it without anything you know without an editor and without mm. ever having taken any kind of writing classes or read a book on it i yeah. just put some don't be afraid to put time and effort into making it good and mm -hmm. also do the work that all being said if that's what you want to do, don't let anyone tell you you can't. Yeah. Because there's just yeah. so many different avenues to publication right now. Um, that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. It's, it's funny too, real quick, that you had uh, uh, that you mentioned Stephen King because, like, you know, I was uh, I, I've like read through the Dark Tower series and it uh -huh. it kind of it's completely not the same obviously right. but like it, it i feel like it has some like uh similarities there it's like the dark tower that goes you know it's like the tower that goes through all the timelines and it's like right. in the center and you have all your <laughs> i had no idea that all his multiverse was all connected yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, somebody said, yeah well look this is this this is this, yeah. and this. Yeah. so this is why you don't want to tell me you know, how the time short happened stephen king's tower is basically what <laughs> Wow. Wow. His tower cut you in half. Spoiler: <laughs> He did <laughs> he did the Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah, way before anybody <laughs> even thought that was a thing that you could do. He's do you guys a awesome. really good writer. I mean, he, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, yes, he he goes on too long sometimes, but his earlier stuff, especially, mm. yes, he just he understands dialogue, he understands characters, except yes. in it when he's got the kids talking like adults and uh, having that is, pure yeah, orgies yeah, um, that was yeah kind of random odd. sex yeah, scenes that, that make no sense really yeah. weird um yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but like all of the the backstories in that i never get bored like when i read it or the stand because all of the little bits and pieces are so interesting and well well written i just think he's yeah. a really good example of just a really really good writer yeah. he's phenomenal yeah the stand was incredible mm -hmm. and i i don't like to read like generally like i like to listen to books but like the stand i'll just sit there and read it because it's yeah. just like it's so good like every bit yeah. i'm in it <laughs> you know but i mean yeah. I see what you guys think of time shards honestly. yeah i'm yeah. i would i'm gonna You're definitely gonna head out and, sure. and go to it's, and get that time for sure david uh, dana thank you so much for being on the show today really really appreciate that if people want to find out more about time shards and where they can get it where can they get the book anywhere anywhere books buy. are sold on the interwebs but the best place to get it is at your local independent bookstore because if they don't have it you can order it exactly. so always go indie first yep yeah. okay oh, well i'm an ebook kind of person so <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was... wherever interweb books are sold you can buy um you can buy ebooks like like mysterious galaxy oh, okay you can oh buy there you go from them. yeah okay do you Good have here. uh just out of curious do you have an audible version or is yes it... yes oh, yes you do. Yes. All yeah. right. Uh, I don't think book three is out yet. But it will be okay, soon. It will be soon. Yeah. But I wasn't able to find it. Uh, I think we mentioned him earlier. He's really, really good. He's he's awesome. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking for the third That's book great. yesterday. Okay. Well, just all of them, and I could only find the two. When was the third published? Just January. a few. Yeah. Well, well, no, not January. Was it later than that? Oh, yeah, that's right. They moved it to April. Yeah, but but it's been out for a few <laughs> months now. Pandemic so brain. so there's Time Shards, Shatter War, and Tempest Fury. Is the name okay. of three books. I just, uh, they were, titles. Amazon was showing uh, two books, but not three. So okay. Yeah. Amazon. I will go find, but you know what? I like the idea of an indie bookstore anyway. So that's yeah. right. And maybe that was the Audible version. Oh, that's possible. That could too. very well be. Yeah. That's, yeah. Thought, that's yeah. very possible. David and I just David bought it. On <laughs> Audible. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I mean, no. Before we let you go, I can't remember. Hi, this is David and Dana from Time Charts, and we took the took a left of the valley. <laughs> I'll say we did. <laughs>
<laughs> no, you, say it. You, say it. <laughs> you know the drill. Oh yeah, we've been we've been here now. <laughs> I'm Dave Fitzgerald, and I'm Dana Presti, <laughs> and we took a left at the valley. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I'm Dave Fitzgerald. And I'm Dana Fitzgerald. Uh, uh, who am I? I'm Dana Fitzgerald. <laughs> Let's take that again. Let's take that again. Absolutely.